little sprouts, we're going to take a virtual field trip today to a pumpkin patch. A pumpkin patch is a farm that grows pumpkins. In this nonfiction, which means real book, we're going to learn all about how a pumpkin grows and what you can use pumpkins for. This book was brought to us by Megan Faulkner and Adam Krauske. A Day at the Pumpkin Patch Autumn is nearly over. Nature is getting ready for winter, but there is still much to see at the farm. Autumn is another name for the season of fall. We love the sweet, crisp apples, colorful decorative corn, plump autumn raspberries, and most of all, pumpkins. This is our guide. She will show us different kinds of pumpkins, explain how they grow, and tell us about the ways people use them. We climb aboard a wagon so the tractor can pull us out to the pumpkin patch. Small pie pumpkins are the first to ripen and be harvested. Ripen means that they have grown enough and they are ready to be picked. Harvested means they are brought in from the field to be used or sold. Though all pumpkins can be eaten, only some types actually taste good. Sweet pie pumpkins are the best choice for making delicious pumpkin treats. See these tiny pumpkins here? They look like they're babies, but that's actually as big as they're going to get. Those are the ones that you want if you're going to make a homemade pumpkin pie. Because they're small, pie pumpkins are also the easiest to carry. We each get to pick one to take home. These tiny fruits are called gourds. They are pumpkins' funny-looking cousins. Gourds and pumpkins are both members of the squash family. We have a contest to see who can find the strangest-looking gourd. Next, we visit the patch that has the pumpkins we know best, the ones that will become jack-o'-lanterns. Much bigger than pie pumpkins, these pumpkins are too heavy for us to lift by ourselves. It's hard to believe they grew from tiny pumpkin seeds. We gather round to learn more about pumpkins. Fruits can grow in four different ways. And believe it or not, pumpkins are a type of fruit. Fruits can grow on a tree, bush, cane, or vine. Pumpkins grow on vines. The large leaves stand on tall stalks and reach towards the sun. Once a pumpkin is ripe, the leaves turn brown and shrivel up. A stem, or a peduncle, connects a pumpkin to the vine. Water and nutrients from the earth and sun travel along the vine and enter the pumpkin through the stem. This gives the pumpkin the energy it needs to grow. The tiny curlicues attached to the stem are called tendrils. They wrap themselves around rocks and other objects to help keep the plant safely in one place. On the bottom of the pumpkin, is a circle. It's called the blossom end. Before there was a pumpkin, there was a flower. And actually, it's a big yellow flower at one point. When the flower was pollinated and the pumpkin began to grow, the flower dried up and fell off. The circle is what is left of the flower. Here's what it looks like. So that used to be the blossom, but now there's just a circle at the bottom. The pumpkin's shiny orange skin is called the rind. It protects the pumpkin from disease and insects. Inside the rind is an orange pulp, the tasty part used for baking and cooking. So this is called the skin or the rind. This is not the part you want to eat. You have to cut the, pulp, the pumpkin open to find the pulp to eat. The lines that run up and down the pumpkins are called ribs. Depending on the pumpkin, there can be many ribs or just a few. Since pumpkins are heavy, farmers load them onto wagons and pull them out of the patch with tractors. Now that they've been harvested, 
It's easier to protect them if the weather gets too cold. They are put on display so that visitors to the farm can choose the one they'd like to take home. There are so many. Which one will make the best jack-o'-lantern? Take a look. Which one do you think you'd pick? I think I want this one. I could put a nice design right there. The biggest pumpkin of all is the Atlantic Giant. Not only is it the largest pumpkin, it's the biggest fruit on Earth. Often weighing in at more than 800 pounds, these giants are grown for competition at pumpkin festivals and county fairs. Since giant pumpkins are about 90% water, they aren't good for eating, but they make great jack-o'-lanterns and boats. Can you believe that? He is in a pumpkin boat. Look how big those are. Oh my goodness. We've learned a lot about pumpkins. Now we get to have some other fall fun. There's a haunted forest and a play area made of hay. Our tour of the farm is over. We can't wait to get home and carve our pumpkins. Here's some tips for making a jack-o'-lantern. Once your pumpkin is clean on the inside and dry on the outside, the fun can begin. Draw a face on the side of the pumpkin that has the fewest bumps and bruises. Ask an adult to cut the circle around the stem. That will be your lid. Now it's time to pull out all the strands of seeds. They're cold and slimy. We save the seeds to make a special snack later. When only the shell is left, carve out the face that you drew. Now it's a real jack-o'-lantern. Here is a recipe if you want to make the pumpkin, roasted pumpkin seeds, which you can eat and enjoy. And there's a picture of some really cool jack-o'-lanterns. Friends, I'm sure that there are probably pumpkin patches close to you. If you have a chance, it's a great place to go and have some fun and pick out some great pumpkins.